Although many amateur astronomers chose to buy sophisticated mirrors and lenses, when it came to making their telescopes, they were more inventive, like Reg Spry. This is the first telescope I made. The mirrors were made professionally. I don't play about making mirrors, it's too difficult. But here you've got a couple of shelves out of the larder, a half shaft from a car, the viewfinder, that was made from the optics taken from an old pair of binoculars that had seen better days. That is a piece of um, loo plumbing. These are the tops of some coffee tops, uh, uh, coffee jars. It doesn't have to be enclosed. See, this flap covers the mirror. And then and the, in here there's another little mirror that, that sends the view through here. You need a lot of complicated tools to put this together, I suppose. Oh, no. Just four tools I'll use for that, which I'll show you upstairs presently. Oh, God, yes. yes. Even now, many British enthusiasts have followed in Reggie's footsteps. And this telescope I've made, it's a long time ago, to make this telescope and all the parts, probably about three weekends. It's made from aluminium sheeting rounded off. And the stand is sewer pipe. This is a part of a police no waiting sign. These are weights to counteract this telescope, to balance it. And these are brake drums filled up with concrete. Since I've been here, the trees all around have got taller. There's extra sheds put up. So I really want to raise this telescope higher and higher. So I've made it onto this box. And I can actually raise this box by using these car jacks. I have two car jacks here, which I can turn and raise the telescope up. These can be turned very slowly. I can raise the telescope up a further one foot. This box can target and go up slowly to try and clear some of the trees. The British amateur astronomer's horizon didn't stop at telescope making. The 1950s economic boom meant British people had more money and more leisure time. For the modern back garden astronomer, this meant they could also afford to build their own observatories, as Paul Doherty showed Patrick Moore. Well, it has nothing more than a box, of course, but it serves its purpose in that it protects the telescope from the weather. Well, it's pretty heavy, and it looks a bit dangerous as it swings back. Yes, you need to know what you're doing. I imagine it. you do. Well, it works beautifully, Paul, but one thing I do notice, and that is that the roof is still vertical, and surely that must cut off part of the sky. It does, actually. I'm not too worried about it. The southern sky is the most important part for me, and eventually I will get some large counterweights fitted up on that to make the whole thing lighter, and eventually it will fold right back. I see. The custom of giving your telescope a good home continues to this day. Though for some, like Roger Steer from Bristol, camouflaging it in a garden shed is the preferred option. Yes, I mean, it's technically an observatory. Um, I built it because I found I was taking so long to set up my telescope when I wanted to go out and observe that I thought if I had a building that, where my telescope was housed, I could just open it up and I would be there observing straight away. Of course, this um, caused me a problem because my garden floods uh, in the winter on occasion, so I had to build myself an island before I, I built it. So I built myself an island and then put the shed, as you call it, on top of it. Uh, the roof slides back, opens up and reveals the sky so I can observe. <laughs>